how's the team looking and what is it about these girls that make them such a dominant force in basketball? They're looking a little bit, to be honest, they're looking a bit, little bit broken at the moment, but these three here are fit and healthy, so that's a good sign. Is that why they got the Guernsey tonight? It, it is. The others are getting treatment. No. Um, Look, to be, to be honest, we've got a wonderful blend of, of youth and experience. Um, we've currently got six girls still over, overseas playing in their European leagues, making the big bucks, but we've, um, we've got a great blend of, of veteran and youth. You know, we've got Liz Cambridge here at 6'8", 20 years old, embarking on potentially her first Olympic Games. Um, we've got a veteran like Lauren Jackson going to her fourth at the ripe old age of 31, um, and, and a great blend of dual and triple Olympians and possibly four or five first-time Olympians. So a great mix of, of youth and experience. Um, you know, the Olympics is tough. The US is certainly the, the, the team to beat. They've, they've uh, won nearly every gold medal. Uh, there's a lot of great international competition, but we're going there, um, you know, plan to be as prepared as we can be, as fit as we can be, and trying to do something special. And I remember when I was in year five and the teacher went around asking us what we wanted to do when we were older, and I said, I want to play basketball for Australia, basketball for Australia in the Olympics. And um, so that's something I've always wanted to do, and it, it's something special if I get to be a part of that. Were you already six foot ten then? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Just Pretty fair shout. Uh, Carly, you've played uh, both here and overseas. Uh, how did playing in France compare to, uh, to playing in Australia? It was actually very different. I, apart from being really a really physical league, I remember my first two games that I played, pre-season games back here, I got fouled out and they were calling me a bit of a thug. Um, but it, it took me a while to get used to this style of game. But I think that the biggest difference was just what we play for. You know, here in Australia, we play for each other and you, you bust your butt out there for, for the girl standing next to you and you know that they're out there doing the same thing. And um, over there, you play for your contract for next season. It was just completely different. I knew a, a lot of people in the crowd would come up to me after every game and in sort of broken English say, you know, I can't believe that you ran up and helped that girl when she fell over and think, well, she's my teammate, this is what we do, but it's just so different over there, you know. They're, they're not about their teammates, they're about themselves, so it was certainly a pleasure to come back and play in the WNBL again. No slide on the French as a nation, of course. No, no, <laughs> of course not, no. <laughs> and Carrie, let's just finish on, on the Olympics. Um, I said before to the girls that holy grail of, of Olympic gold. Now, I, th I think we become a little bit blasé when we talk about Olympic golds because it's such bloody hard work to get to an Olympics. Do we take for granted the fact that these girls are, are so successful that we seem they're going to be there? Are you going to get gold? Is that something you get sick of hearing? No, no look, I mean, I don't think you get sick of hearing about wonderful history and, uh, of Australian sporting teams and, and certainly to be a part of the Opals, it's something special and to be a part of an Australian Olympic team and to carry that torch. And I think, as all Australian teams, the Opals have always punched above their weight. You know, for us to get a bronze medal in 96 was almost outrageous. And then to, to win the last three silvers has been huge. And, you know, we're, we're a country of 20 million people, um, proud of, of all the sports that we play. And we play the superpowers in women's basketball. It's a, a huge sport for the US, for Russia, for China. Um, and here we are as little old Aussies. Well, Liz isn't so little. Um, <laughs> But, you know, taking on, you know, nations that put huge amounts of money into their sports, that, that play for a lot of things, and, and Australia and the Opals go there and stand up, you know, stand up proud and do great things for our country and for, for basketball. So, to, uh, you know, it's silly to say that there's not pressure on us to, to repeat and get back on podiums and, and to win medals, and uh, to take on the might of the US is a big task, but as all Australian teams will and do, is we'll go in there with a, with a fight and, and go in there and, and do Australia proud. How's the team looking and what is it about these girls that make them such a dominant force in basketball? They're looking a little bit, to be honest, they're looking a bit, little bit broken at the moment, but these three here are fit and healthy, so that's a good sign. Is that why they got the Guernsey tonight? It, it is. The others are getting treatment. No. Um, look, to be, to be honest, we've got a wonderful blend of, of youth and experience. Um, we've currently got six girls still over, overseas playing in their European leagues, making the big bucks, but we've, um, we've got a great blend of, of veteran and youth. You know, we've got Liz Cambridge here at 6'8", 20 years old, embarking on potentially her first Olympic Games. Um, we've got a veteran like Lauren Jackson going to her fourth at the ripe old age of 31, um, and, and a great blend of dual and triple Olympians and possibly four or five first-time Olympians. So a great mix of, of youth and experience. Um, you know, the Olympics is tough. The US are certainly the, the, the team to beat. They've, they've uh, won nearly every gold medal. Uh, there's a lot of great international competition, but we're going there, um, you know, plan to be as prepared as we can be, as fit as we can be, and trying to do something special.